Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing great. I'll give everyone a second to join here. Uh, I thought I'd bring Apollo in for his usual good morning to everybody. Um, yes, thank you so much, buddy. I'm going to put him down now so we can get started. Uh, I wanted to be in a couple minutes early because I have so many things to get through today. I wanted to make sure that I have time to do all of that. And I'd like to start off just by saying thanks. Today, it's actually all about you guys. And um, I'm so grateful that we've been able to make it together to this milestone. And I did this for the 100,000 celebration. I'm doing it today. I'm taking viewer questions. And there's some really great ones about intuitive development, psychic development. And that's really what I'm here for. So I can't wait to kind of dig into everything that's here. But let me first start by welcoming everybody from all around the world. I can see everyone joining. Um, nice to meet you. Today, we're gonna have a chance to interact a little bit more. After I get through the questions here, I have about 20 that I need to get through. Um, then I'll take a couple of questions at the end. So um, I'm gonna start actually with Becca's question. It's not one of these in here, but I think I've received it um, about a hundred times. So I wanna make sure that I do address all of my signs, because I know that's a question that does get asked to me quite often. So my sun sign is Libra. I'm on the Scorpio cusp and I have Capricorn is rising and my moon is in Taurus. And as I said before, I don't make a big deal out of those three because whenever I'm doing a reading for any sign, I put myself out of it. I'm really channeling and bringing the message forth for those signs, but I have no problem sharing that part of my sort of chart. And hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, quick kind of rules for how we're gonna stay organized today. Ryan and Maria will help you out with this as well. But as I said, I accepted questions today from Patreon members and also YouTube members, anyone that's clicked the join button. And if you see them in chat, they have green text. These are the folks every month that give back a little bit extra and they make it possible. So this is my way of saying thanks to everybody, um, but especially to those monthly supporters. And if you wanna become one of those supporters and take part in the next viewer's choice video or Q and A, that's a great way to do it. I'm still gonna take a couple of questions at the end because I know not, a, not everyone can afford that or maybe you didn't know about it. So I'll take a couple of questions depending on how quickly I can get through all of this, but please save those until the end. Of course, while I'm going through this, if you have related comments or questions, you can put that in chat, but uh, I'm gonna try to get through these questions first. Uh, I wanna say today's a very special day because it actually marks my fifth anniversary of not being in a corporate job. It was literally, I think the 31st or something of January, 2015. Um, that I officially left a corporate job. So um, I'm celebrating an anniversary with you guys too, not just a milestone. And I began the channel in 2013. So it's been a long journey and uh, a long sort of climb up to where we're at right now. And a lot of you were with me back when I had like two subscribers. So I appreciate you sticking with me and all the changes. And uh, with that being said, let's get into the questions. I can't wait to talk today about everything that you guys have been asking me. So I'm gonna start with a question from Louise. And this was, uh, I'm gonna begin with YouTube and then I'll move to Patreon. So Louise asked me, how can I be more intuitive? What is needed to open the third eye and crown chakras? So first of all, those are great questions. And I'm sure a lot of people um, want to know how to, especially, I think actually most people wanna open up those two chakras because the crown allows us to connect with the divine, our higher self, higher realms. Third eye, of course, is gonna give us insights into what we need to see, what people don't want us to see. But I wanna kind of underline this with saying that I think it's very important to begin with lower chakras um, because, and I don't think everybody does the research or maybe doesn't think about this. If you can ground yourself, if you really focus on the first chakra, on your root chakra, you're going to be able to stay in the meditation and go way further out there and um, maintain the meditation for a longer period of time because you have a connection to the earth plane. So it was something that I didn't really understand until later. Chakras one, two, and three are just as important as um, four, five, six, seven. Um, so spend some time grounding. And uh, I remember I had a great Reiki teacher once that reminded me if I didn't have like a darker stone that I could use for grounding, I could just go out and grab a rock because literally this is from the earth. You can take any stone outside and just hold on to it. Now this one happens to be a, a geode, but you could just go outside and get a rock that looked more like this side of it and meditate and uh, really feel a connection to mother earth, then start to go into the higher chakras. But to answer your question, Louise, 
um, what I wrote down here, a couple things that we that you can do. Um, many of you know I actually studied to be a Kundalini yoga instructor. So there's a special meditation called See the Unseen, um, where you focus, you hold a mudra, you, your hands in a certain position, and you, you work on this meditation for 11 minutes. You can Google it. Um, but uh, there's, an, there's a technique in there that all of you can try today to kind of test your intuitiveness, which is to push your tongue against the soft palate right behind the uh, two front teeth. And if you do this, some of you might feel a pressure in your third eye. The soft palate actually has pressure points, just like when you um, have acupuncture done, that can help you uh, connect with your third eye. And that's one of the pressure points. So if it's something that you're all interested in, I might do a video where I walk through that meditation, but clearly it's 11 minutes and I don't wanna do that right now. So the meditation is called Seeing the Unseen. This is a Kundalini exercise. Um, regular everyday things that you can do, it's just, it's meditation. And I'm gonna talk about this later, but you don't have to go into meditation for like half an hour. Two or three minutes a day consistently will actually start to open that up. And of course, let's not forget, this is a wonderful way to, this is one of the reasons I actually started reading cards was to develop intuition and to work past any fears that I have. Uh, so I would say, of course, meditation, uh, writing, art, tarot, all of these things are good. Um, and the most important thing is just to quiet your mind a little bit. That's why meditation is key. But if you have a hard time doing that, singing bowls or um, guided meditation, or even just listening to uh, some sort of white noise can kind of get you out of your head a little bit. And you need to just tune in to see what's happening. Um, but we'll talk more about this later. I believe intuition is more subtle than most people think. Uh, a lot of folks are expecting what happened with um, medium on TV where you would see something in your head immediately. It doesn't work that way always. It's kind of like a whisper. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more later, but I think consistently meditating, of course, and doing it for shorter amounts, but more often, like every day would be a, a great way to start that. And then there's some specific yoga meditations that you can do as well. Next question from Kim. Kim asked, can a person have such bad karma in a past life that no matter what you do in this life, it's not enough? I know we've all felt like we've had days where the world's working against us. I understand that. Um, and then this person also said, um, you know, if, this, if a person lives with the purpose of helping others, living unconditional, being as pure as heart as possible, et cetera, et cetera, but still is misunderstood, could it be that the past life's transgressions are interfering? And then this person said they're asking for a friend, which made me laugh. Um, I think that short answer to this is every life you have the potential to move the needle forward. Sure, you could be dealing with more karma, or you could even be just deciding to take on more. A lot of times more ascended souls will decide to try to um, deal with some really challenging things so that they can shift their consciousness, uh, grow a little bit more, learn a little bit more. And so you may actually be just in that sort of experience where you wanted to take a more difficult path so that you could expand. Uh, but I believe that everybody has the potential as a human for redemption because that's part of the human process. That's what reincarnation is about. And it's not limited to humans. It's all life in this solar system and in this galaxy and in this universe, because there's more than one type of life. Um, so we've, we've walked every path. And a lot of times we experience trauma in the past or negative things in the past so that we can learn. Um, there's another question about shadow energy and stuff. I think everything's a teacher. All these situations are teaching opportunities for you. So my advice to you is to start to expect that you're gonna get a break, start to expect things to shift, believe in yourself. And because um, that sort of curse of karma or curses in general typically work because you put energy into that feeling that I can't, I won't, it's not gonna move. So start to expect that your karmic energy is shifting, forgive yourself, love yourself. There may be some integration to work on as well, um, but think about school. You know, There's some people that are naturally talented, but they don't work hard. There are other people that work really hard and they may be able to surpass the natural talent. So you may be in that situation where some people enter this life with a cleaner slate, but there's no reason you can't get on the same level or higher than them because it's all about work, intention, effort, and belief in yourself. Okay, good question, Kim. Brett asked the next one, um, which is, Nicholas, could you please share your thoughts on shadow work and integration? And then I asked Brett for a follow-up. I said, uh, and, and this is what we kind of agreed upon. It was it about facing fears and integrating the darker sides of ourselves, bringing them into light. And I got a yes on that. So 
Um, this was a fantastic question because I think that sometimes, especially spiritual people, are afraid of dealing with or existing too long in a place of sadness, fear, or uncertainty. These are triggers, right? So every time something like that happens, um, I would say there's a, a chance to sort of understand what is it that is pulling me into this energy? Why am I sad? Why am I upset? What is it about this that I, I need to try to learn a little bit more about? And I wrote down that I think that we are all alchemists basically, which means that we can take something and move it elsewhere. We don't, we're not stuck in one place of being. Again, that's what the reincarnation cycle is all about. Um, so by the way, I still see some questions, hold the questions until the end, okay? Thank you. Um, so what I was gonna say is um, one great example of the alchemy at work is the prayer for St. Francis. If you ever take a, a listen to this, uh, the first line is, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, but everything else is all about the alchemy. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. It continues on for several verses. But basically, when you are faced with something that is lower frequency, instead of meeting it with the same low frequency, which we see so often, by the way, in entertainment, in politics, in day-to-day -day news, in, in arguments, and things like that, if you could instead go forward with something different, which is, I understand you, I hear you, and then trying to move to something else. So instead of fighting someone, trying to embrace them and say, yes, but have you thought about this? Or could we try to do this together? So um, I always try to do that in my monthly readings too. When I see something negative, I try to understand it and I try to give you a way to, to change the energy a little bit. So um, I've actually written a book, which I will be releasing later this year, where I created this pantheon of, of deities that are of light and low frequencies are high and low frequencies. And the point is not to fight, but to integrate. And I think that's what our souls are trying to do on this planet as well. And I, I actually think that there was a time or there are dimensions out there that are not so binary, that are not so kind of focused on these two extremes. Um, the two extremes exist in this particular dimension, however, so that we can learn. And on this planet, a lot of life chooses to reincarnate here because it's one of the, the biggest planets where you have free will. You can decide to do anything in any given moment. We see that every single day um, in our own lives and in others. And so you always have the chance for redemption, going back to that earlier question, or you have a chance to spiral in another direction. And that's what's exciting. It's a roller coaster. Our soul kind of goes through it all so it can understand what its purpose is. And that's why I'm not afraid when some of those feelings come through or when I see something like in a dream that might be darker or scarier. I think to myself, wow, I have some work to do on this. Um, it came through for a reason and I'm so grateful that it came through because now I realize that's something that I have to focus on. And whenever we have someone in our life that knows how to push our buttons, typically that's why it's coming through as well. Um, one little tip that I wrote down here too is that whenever I even smudge my house, instead of just going through and trying to banish or push things out, I always say a prayer for transmutation. So I'll, I'll, I'll say something like this. Um, in this space, only love, light, compassion, and God can exist. If there's anything of a lower frequency, please allow it to elevate and return, uh, elevate and go higher or return to source. That elevate and go higher gives a chance for healing, even as I'm doing sort of like housekeeping, you know, metaphysical housekeeping. So I always believe in redemption or a higher um, possibility for energy around me, um, whether I can see it or not see it. And I think that's a really healthy way to look at stuff. Don't be afraid of the shadows. Shine your light brighter. And I'm going to talk about this later when someone was saying uh, a question about empathy and like, do I need to kind of protect myself? I think we have to kind of open up our energy and be brighter in, in the, the sort of face of shadows. So don't retreat and don't attack shine your light, shine your integrity, integrate, and face that shadow head on is what I would say. Um, it's there to help you. And when you love it, heal it, and kind of shine your light through it, it's going to go away. Uh, so Darylin asked me the next question. And this was, um, I have a question about protecting one's energy, possibly in relation to being an empath. Uh, your reading and crystal clear meditation for Pisces slightly answered it, but I'm curious 
what others uh, you would recommend. I don't want to shut off completely, and sometimes it's hard to stay calm, separate, or differentiate someone else's energy uh, often in a workplace. I totally understand that because sometimes you have no choice of where you're seated. This is true for students as well, or for anyone that has a roommate situation and you wish you could have your own space, but from a financial reason, you need to kind of coexist with someone. We are all put into situations where <laughs> we have to protect ourselves, right? And so I was just talking about that a little bit earlier. I like how these questions are kind of leading into one another and I was just taking them chronologically. But um, what you should always try to do is to go brighter and not dim your light. This is because when somebody elevates, when someone's in a higher frequency, it then sets the tone that they're in control and that everyone around them has a chance to meet or fall away meet the frequency or even go higher or decide to focus on other people that are not in kind of touch with or charge of their energy. So I want you to start to think, I'm okay. I control my energy. I control my light. And this person's negativity, that's their own choice. They can sit there and they can kind of mull in it and kind of allow that to kind of seep into their into everything that they touch, but it's not going to affect me. I'm not going to get upset at that. And even if you are triggered, just take a deep breath, walk away and try to stay in the higher energy. Um, I think for you, especially and anybody that has like a family member, a loved one or a coworker that's constantly pulling them down, you're going to have to be very habitual about the protection rituals that you do. You should start each day meditating, grounding yourself and seeing yourself surrounded in light. I never liked the vision of a bubble. I think you need something that can't be popped. So for me, I liked sort of, um, I do this a lot in the guided meditations in our monthly videos. I also do it with my clients. Uh, a lot of times I like to imagine that I'm connecting with a, a star or with the sun or with the moon and I can see this pillar of light that follows me wherever I go because that light can't be kind of, it can't be shut off. It's from a source that's infinite, especially if you deal with like a sun or a star. So just imagine you have that light always with you, always protecting you, always shining on you, always connecting you to source. This is going to keep you brighter, higher, and more energetic than this other person. Um, start that in the morning, see that light, connect with it periodically when you're in, in the face of this darkness. And I've even in my head sometimes said like, show my light or show my truth. And I've noticed sometimes people recoil or they lose their train of thought when you do that. So when you go brighter, it does work. The other thing that you can do is in the evening, you have to, to try to kind of let go of the, the barnacles and the sort of cosmic dust that you're getting from these people because it does get into your energy field. So make sure that you do something like a salt bath, Epsom salt. Um, you can smudge yourself. You don't have to just smudge objects. You can actually take sage and just kind of move it around your body. That works as well. Um, and uh, also just meditating again and sort of working that, breathing that energy out and getting back into your own space. I have an older video on my, uh, my YouTube channel and website called a contract release. For those of you that are dealing with particularly negative people or like an ex-lover or ex-husband or wife or whatever, you can also work on contract releases, but you can, you can do it with people that are still in your life, a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, because we come into this life with a soul contract, but sometimes we still have the old one. So the weird thing is you can have, you know, a sibling that maybe in another life you were their boss or you were their child or something weird, the dynamics are off. So when you release the soul contract and an abbreviated version would be something like this. Um, I release all contracts past and present in this life and in others. You can also say explicit or implicit. Um, in doing this, in releasing that contract and in releasing the debt, um, we are both free. I, I mentioned in one of the signs that when you let go, it cuts both ways. So you're healing yourself, you're healing that person. And now you're allowing for a clearer sort of connection in the heart space to open up. So that's my advice on that is to go higher, not to mute, to have a protection ritual in the morning, to do a contract release if you feel that that would benefit you. And then each and every evening to kind of let go of some of the energy. Okay. The next question is from Joe, and Joe asked me um, a longer question, but it said, how do we kind of deal with family and loved ones who have extremely different views, beliefs, or feelings um, and uh, that, that might go counter to what we are learning? And I guess the question here was this person was wondering if they had to try to educate or argue with that the, the sort of family or uh, close friend or let them go. And... Um, 
there was a fear that they would kind of be losing people that they loved in their life. And I, I think we've all been there where you're excited because there's this new part of your life where you're, you're getting into a better or healthier state and you want to share that with people, but they're not ready to go there. Um, and I think that's the key is that it's not your job to, to sort of try to move them. Everybody's on their own path. Everyone has free will. We talked about that earlier. So what I wrote down to Joe here, and uh, I'll read this and then I'm going to add to it. I said, I think the most important thing is to be true to yourself. Change takes time, especially with families. Um, so sometimes they're the slowest to see the new you because think about it. You've been in their life for years and years and years. And sometimes there's this sort of like projected reality of what they think you are because you've been playing a role. But there's this uh, evolution that's happened behind the scenes. What you're truly doing now is opening up the sort of curtains and saying, no, this is the true me. But they're still looking at the actor on stage. And so give them time to, to get used to that. You're used to it because you've been going through it for maybe 18 years or 20 years, or maybe it's brand new and you're just going through it in the next you know, couple months here. But whatever it is, you've still had more time than they have. They've had a few moments maybe to deal with it. So give them time, but don't make apologies for who you are. Don't ask for permission to be who you are and don't expect them to change overnight. Hold space for them because you want them to be a part of your life. And I think what's important maybe is to say, I really love you and I always want you to be a part of my life. There's something going on that I feel like, you know, we need to talk about. And if we do this, it'll make us closer. That's a nice way to start. Not with an ultimatum, not with anything that's aggressive, not with any fear or any uncertainty about yourself, any sort of announcement coming out or confrontation, it needs to be about love, commonality, and understanding that you want it to be safe and, uh, and good for both of you. So I think that's my advice. Yeah, especially don't make apologies, don't ask permission, and don't expect, don't demand for acceptance to happen. That, that's something that has to be given when it's ready. But if you hold an open heart and say, I'm always here, but, uh, but I'm not going to allow you to abuse me, I'm not going to allow you to kind of not love me, that's okay. Because I think at the end of the day, self-preservation is super important. So you do what's important for you to feel safe, to feel happy and hold, think of like in tarot, the, um, the eight of cups, for instance, perhaps, or the six of cups or anything that kind of allows for love and a return to the past. I'm going to pull one card for you because this was a tougher question. Um, yeah, it's self like valuing yourself and not expecting something in return. So I would say unconditional love is really, really key and that's going to help you out. Okay. Good luck, Joe. By the way, if anybody joined, I just want to remind you that I'm going through some questions that have been already submitted. Um, at the very end, I'll let you know when I'm ready and I can take a couple extra. I just want to say thank you for joining and hopefully you're enjoying um, hearing some of the answers to this as well. So, okay, Char uh, Charlene asked the next question. She said, why do I battle to hear from my angels? Am I doing something wrong? And then Colleen had a uh, related question, which was, how do I get in touch with my angels and guides? I already meditate. And so I'm gonna infer from that question that uh, Colleen is meditating, but maybe not hearing the guides in the way that she wants to hear them. So there's so many answers to this and so many things that we can kind of work through. I'm gonna try to be um, succinct in all of these pieces. I wanna jump to a visual that I think will help a lot of you though. Uh, I had an experience with uh, an archangelic entity which did not speak really any language. It, it used telepathy to communicate with me. And if you've ever watched Artificial Intelligence, the, uh, the movie that came out in the early 2000s, uh, there was a scene at the end, it was the tacked on scene because originally there was a, a Kubrick play and then there was additional footage that I think, was it uh, Spielberg that did that movie? He added an extra scene at the end where these aliens were kind of like, excavating on this planet and uh, the, the way that they communicated is what's important. If you watch the scene, there were these sort of like almost translucent gray-like beings and they connected their hands together. And what they communicated was the, the visuals and then the complete thoughts and understanding of what happened. So when I communicated with this higher entity, it never spoke a word to me. I, I saw visual downloads and it showed me kind of through gestures what it was, because there were some instructions it was giving me, but it showed me what I needed to be doing. And then I realized I could talk to it and then it, I would receive confirmation in a knowing, not like a word or a nod or something like that, but it never spoke to me 
it downloaded insight and information to me. And sometimes when I wake up from a very clairvoyant dream, I will hear in my head like the location or what I, where I was, when it was. And these are forms of psychic communication that don't involve language. So what I'm trying to say is that you may actually be receiving communications, but you're expecting them to come in one way. So um, I think that first and foremost, angels and guides are always in your life. They're already there. Uh, they don't always use words, which I just talked about. They're more likely to influence you than to directly communicate into your mind, into your ears, or come into your, uh, even into your third eye. They work in a subtle sort of way because first of all, angels can only intercept really if you ask them to. Um, like, I need your help, please come through. They, they're kind of waiting for us to reach out to them. They're still guiding and protecting, but intervention uh, or them intervening, you do have to kind of ask for that help. They also speak softly um, and subtly, as I just said. Um, what, another angel that I actually heard communication with was Uriel, but it was a whisper, but it was a whisper that kind of stung because the message from Uriel was that I needed to say thank you more often. This was like 10 years ago, and I've been trying to ever since put gratitude in everything. Um, but it was a very subtle piece of communication that had a lot of resonance afterwards. And then my heart space opened up and then the angel was able to communicate with me. So um, that's another, I'm saying this for a reason, which is um, I, I wrote down four, four bullets on how you can better connect with your guides. First is always begin with gratitude. Thank you, Uriel. Always speak with love. Listen more than you speak. Oh my God, that's the hardest one, right? And pay attention to the subtle signs and cues. Angels and guides are not going to come through bombastically with loud voices, uh, with crazy downloads all the time. They are, they are gently there kind of nudging you along. They're always present. Uh, and as you continue to work on your skills, you might be able to pick up on their voices. You may be able to see them, but know that they're already in your life. That would be my answer. I think that some of you are just expecting a very exaggerated version of them to appear. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And yes, I'm glad that that resonated. Listen, listen more than you speak. Listen for a while too. This is the one thing that I think I had to learn with meditation. There may be some meditation, uh, you know, sometimes when you're doing it where you just are clearing the cobwebs. That's what I did for like three or four years with my Kundalini yoga experience. I had to go through and like clear out all this energy in my, my mind and my body. And then I went through the teacher training, not so much to teach, although I am helping you guys meditate now, more so that I could go into an attunement and really connect to my higher self. But that took me like five years of work to open the channel completely. So just don't expect it overnight. It will come, be persistent, listen, and you'll be surprised. Another thing that happened to me after about five years of reading cards is one day I woke up and I started to feel healing energy through my hands. Um, so that was maybe like five years of meditation plus five years of reading cards, 10 years total, all of a sudden, like the healing hands opened up. That was 10 years. That's a long time. That's like as long as people go to medical school. So give yourself time. Don't expect it to happen overnight. It didn't for me. Okay. Um, Zeke asked me a question about relationships and I'm going to paraphrase because the question was very personal and the highlight of this was that they were in a relationship with a third party and, um, it sounds like they're waiting to try to reconnect with their partner. So I, I didn't get all the information, but it sounds like there was an affair or there was someone that came between them. They're still in love with the person that um, is now maybe involved with someone else. And the question here was really, um, how do you deal with a relationship in crisis? And maybe I think more importantly, kind of how do you move out of being in that sort of cycle? And I think that's something that we can all relate to. I think embodying the things that you seek in someone else is the first and the most important quality of being successful in relationships. So if you expect someone in your life to come through and be transparent, to be independent, to be financially stable, to just have all of their ducks in a row, make sure that you're doing that work on yourself first and foremost. Once you've done a lot of integration, a lot of healing, and you're kind of at the point where you don't need someone, but you'd like someone in your life, that's when you're gonna pull in the highest partner. Zeke, I think what's going on here is that this person doesn't seem to be working as hard as you, or they may be conveying to you in nonverbal cues that they're ready to move on. So I think you deserve to be happy and you deserve someone who loves you. Love yourself, work on integration first and foremost. If this person's the right person, when you do that integration work, they'll raise to your frequency. 
If not, you're going to meet someone that's in a much higher place and is going to not be testing you. Uh, I talked about finding a partner, not a teacher in manifestation, that video that I did. And I think this is this is sort of the lesson that you're going through right now or the, the challenge that you're going through. So, um, yeah, you want someone who's not trying to make you like test your boundaries. They're trying to be a, a champion, a partner, um, someone who truly loves you. So I think that you have a little bit of integration work to do, but you're going to be fine. And this person, it's probably a blessing that they're working with someone else because you don't have to teach them anymore. So maybe not what you wanted to hear, but that's what I'm seeing. I'll pull one card for you too. Yeah, this is about self-work. It was a it was a teaching situation. It wasn't necessarily a divine partnership, but you learned a lot from it. They learned a lot from it. And now you can invest in yourself. Eight of Pentacles is all about doing something for you and continuing to do the work on yourself. Okay. Um, the next one is from, it's either Shana or Shana. I know you're here in the chat. Um, you're one of, uh, one of my members here. Uh, so you said you had three questions. Uh, you asked me, how can you connect to your spirit guides? How do you maintain a spiritual practice being a busy mom? Great question. And also how do I use meditation to release stress and be more present to connect with guides and intuition when life seems to be going hundred miles per hour? I know I took your original question and kind of broke it into those three. But um, I think we both agreed in the um, on YouTube that that was a good sort of summary of it. So as I was replying to this yesterday, typing at my computer, I thought, well, the first thing that kind of hit me as an epiphany is bring your kids into the spiritual practice. Um, I said, meditate or pray with your kids. If they're really young, you can do like mommy and me yoga. Um, you can teach them the value of being quiet together. It's not just about play. It's not just about, you know, working on the computer or devices or playing a game with friends. It's actually also about working on yourselves and you can do that sort of family together time, just, just you and your kids. I think that's a great start. Um, and I wish even my parents had done more of that. We were all busy and it wasn't a big thing last century, but this century we're all moving into a better place. So you include the kids. Um, I talked about connecting with the guides, but your question is how can you do it when you're busy? Um, first of all, one or two minutes a day is, is perfect perfect starting place. And if you have a busy family uh, and a busy schedule, do it early in the morning. My dog wakes me up every morning, like around five. And I usually sometimes wake up at three o'clock because I'm, that's like the spiritual magic hour. As many of you know, if you're, if you're awake, you just open your eyes sometimes at 3 a.m. So you can meditate at that point. That's usually what I have to do to put myself back to sleep. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, meditate. If you happen to get up five minutes before the rest of the house, meditate. Or if you have to do it in the privacy of the bathroom while you're taking a shower or brushing your teeth and shut the door, you can meditate then. It's not ideal, but it's okay. And I think it's the habit of meditating that's really important. So break it into smaller chunks, do it more often, bring the kids into the fold. I think that would be great. Um, and I also think you would probably benefit from guided meditation. I do 12 a month, so you can listen to the, the last portion of any of mine. I'm gonna pull a card for you too to see if there's any advice um, coming through that you need to pay attention to that could help you. Um, yeah, it's really about structure um, and just being consistent with it. I think that'll be key, okay? Let's take a look at Sarah D here. You said, um, how do I learn to let go and trust the universe to lead me on the path that I'm supposed to be taking? I'm experiencing synchronicities almost every day, but sometimes I doubt their validity. So the first thing that I wrote, and I, I believe this wholeheartedly, is that synchronicities aren't an accident. Like by definition, they're happening because you're doing something right. So if you're getting them, you're on the right track. Stop doubting yourself. That's awesome. A lot of people will spend their whole life trying to get some synchronicities. So you're already on the right path. That's my first message. Fear and lack of um, faith will negatively impact your ability to be able to manifest. So trust in your power. Think to yourself, I'm a powerful manifester. You can also put after that, like if you're trying to be um, a, you know, an entrepreneur or if you're trying to go to school and get like straight A's, you could just say, I'm, a, I'm an intelligent entrepreneur capable of achieving all of my goals. Like really put it in the affirmative. Cause when you think, I'm not sure if I can do it, I probably won't be able to. I always have bad luck. Money never comes to me. Those things, are actually you pulling your energy down and cutting off potential manifestations. So don't do that. Um, how does it feel when you first start doing something? Um, well, th oh, this is what I was asking you. I think that you should trust your intuition. There were two questions. Um, what do you want to do? Actually, three. What do you want to do? How does it feel when you're starting something? And um, how difficult is it for you to get things done? If it feels like it's good when you're starting it, you're probably on the right path. 
Um, if you know what you want to do, you're going to be able to get there a lot sooner. And if you like what you do, um, it's going to also be a lot more fun to get there. Uh, and if you have a lot of blocks, that's often the universe saying, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Or are you sure you want to do this? So listen to the internal sort of question in your head, answer it, and then keep moving forward. So more faith in yourself is really what I would advise here. Um, you're fine. If you have synchronicities, you're already on the right path, okay? Uh, Cheryl Rose wrote the next question. Uh, I'm going to summarize it. She has a healing business online and wants to know how to be successful. Be authentic. Figure out what makes your business and your voice unique and stick to that. That's one of the things that I try to do in my own channel. Um, I don't I don't try to duplicate what's out there. I don't always <laughs> I don't always do what people want. I, I try to do what is necessary or what's best. I try to find what I, I feel I'm going to be able to do best as well. And I stick with that authentic voice because otherwise it's gonna come through. So be yourself, don't try to kind of like cater to expectations or audience. A lot of times the best things that we see product wise are innovations, right? So risk is always gonna be a part of that. Just trusting yourself and being yourself, being authentic, being spiritual, using your name and your business. That is authentic, that is a risk. That shows that you're on the right path already. Um, and then trust that the people that you are attracting are going to follow and grow with you. That's my advice. Um, but good luck. I'm glad you're working on a path of healing and helping the world. We need more people like you. And uh, no, I'm going to talk about guides in other languages in a, in a few moments here. So stay tuned on that. Uh, Maria spoke to me next here. And the question was, how long can it take for things to manifest? How do you discern between a dream and an intuition? And what happens if I see a sign, but it doesn't happen? They're all great questions. I'm gonna to try to kind of delve into each of these. Um, first of all, how long does it take for things to manifest? It depends on how, how much you trust yourself, how good you are at manifesting. And um, I would say the short answer is it could happen today or it could happen in a few years from now. It depends on how much energy you're putting into manifestation. If you're just kind of putting it out there like, I'd like for that to happen, but you don't put a lot of um, a lot of work, a lot of energy, a lot of visualization in it. The universe is thinking maybe you're not so serious. So you really want to visualize it, feel it, trust it, release it, and then that'll help. Look at my video; that'll help you out. But I would say it depends on your own uh, personal skills with manifestation and also how much investment you're doing. The other thing is this brings me to just clairvoyance in general. Uh, if you see an intuition of something that can happen. Oftentimes there's no time associated with it because the time is connected to your free will. Uh, did I put it here? I think I did, yes. Um, it reminded me of the original Star Wars trilogy where Yoda was trying to look into the future to see if Luke's friends were in danger in the city of the clouds. And um, Yoda said, it's hard to see. I don't know how it's gonna end because the future is always moving. That's actually pretty accurate. That's why we show up every month because what, I, what we're talking about each and every month, it's gonna change the trajectory. Because if I, there's a, a great uh, writer, Neil Gaiman, and he, he wrote for a comic book series called The Sandman. There's a character in this, I think it's Destiny. Um, I don't think it has any eyes. It just has this book and everything's written. So it knows everything that's gonna happen from now until the end of time. If that were the case, I would be Destiny. I would just be saying, here's the book, here's what you're doing. What a boring story that would be for us. So we have the chance to speed things up or slow them down. It's not like that comic. Um, we're in control of our own destiny. That's why I even say the destiny card in my spread is malleable. It can, it can change, it can shift. So um, timing is always up to you. How do you discern between a dream and an intuition? Um, a dream sometimes is just a mental clearing of your, your sort of like subconscious. If it's really nonsensical, it probably is just a dream. The more you start to work on your intuition, you'll notice that even sort of those purges though contain gems of knowledge and you're gonna see more and more symbology and things from your subconscious that you wanna pay attention to. But a very sort of clairvoyant dream will feel real. So real that you might actually be able to taste, to feel, to remember, especially if it's a past life flashback, what it was like to be in that life. Or if you're seeing something that's going to happen, <clears throat> it's almost as if it's happening right now. It's very, very clear. The details are vivid. You remember a lot after the dream and you wake up knowing I have to do something. You're not thinking to yourself, you know, I shouldn't watch 
that before I go to sleep. Maybe you watch something and it's, you know, you, you see that, no, it's a very clear sort of message that's coming through. Uh, in fact, like I'll give you a, a couple of examples. One of my earliest memories was um, I, I have, I can go all the way back to, you know, Egypt, Etruria and Mesopotamia. But when I, I saw the flashback to Mesopotamia, I actually heard the word in my head when I woke up and I'm like, and I had to look up when it was, where it was, what, what that was about. And then the other one was Etruria, which was a precursor to Italy. And I saw myself uh, walking outside in the nighttime, looking at the stars and the reflection in the water. So I knew I did astrology in the, in the deep past. And then I was pointing to a cliff. I was helping my tribe find a cliff. And, um, and we were climbing up that hill and I could see that it was, a, it was a nighttime sort of scene. But as I woke up, I heard Etruria in my head and I looked it up and I guess they were cliff dwellers. And um, so I saw about myself that I was an astrologer. I was in ancient Italy uh, where part of my relatives came from even in this incarnation, I'm, I'm half Italian. And, um, and I got all of these details that it wasn't just like, you know, walking into school naked. <laughs> We've all had those sort of dreams. It was, no, I had vivid connections to the past, or I've seen things where I've been able to see people before they come into my life, or I see things going on right now. That's, that's intuition. If it, if it has relevance and it feels real and you get hard facts that, that you can somehow kind of connect to something that's going on, that's intuition. You'll get better at that as you start to delve into it. Keep a dream journal though. Even your symbol, symbolic sort of experiences are going to help open up your intuition. What happens if I see something assigned, but it doesn't happen? Your free will could have changed it. Um, and I would say also, the other thing is you don't know that it won't happen yet. As I said earlier, timing is something that is constantly in flux. So um, yeah, you could have changed your path, which shows the power of you <laughs> over an intuition. So never fear what you see. It's there to show you a possibility or something that you can or should pay attention to. Ho hopefully that helped you. Okay, the uh, next question is Erica's. And this is, you mentioned before that you left your corporate job um, in pursuit of a more spiritual path. Was there anything specific that happened to you um, to help you understand that this was your direction? Uh, it's such a big decision, one that apparently Erica's considered as well. And Erica was wondering if I had any thoughts or guidance. So what an appropriate question, as I said, because it's been five years to the date that I left my job. Uh, there were a lot of things. I'll share a few with you today. The first, and I think one of the most important was the year before, uh, actually about six months before my father passed away. And whenever, if you've ever lost a parent, a partner, a child, a sibling, or a really close friend, it's one of the most kind of like impactful experiences you can, but especially if it's a blood relative, right? So uh, as he was dying, what he kind of regretted was how quickly the time had passed. And um, particularly, I think he said like, where'd the last 40 years go? And I was very close to, I was in my late thirties when, when he passed. So I thought, you know, do I, I don't wanna be that in 40 years. I don't wanna be regretting where I'm at. So his gift to me was like, don't waste your time. So thanks dad for that. It was a very valuable gift. Um, I had a teacher at the time, one of a spiritual sort of healer that I go to from time to time in Los Angeles that reminded me, well, actually it was more of like a, <laughs> it was a punch in the third eye, um, but with words saying, you have a path, you have something you're supposed to be doing. You have a connecting flight. Are you going to take it? Because if not, I, I'm not sure if it's going to happen again. And that really sat with me. So death of a loved one and a teacher that I admired saying, you're about to mess up if you don't make a move. You've been waiting too long. You've been waffling. Uh, and then I knew, I mean, these two things just helped me see something that I already knew, which is I wanted to do something else. I've been writing a book in my free time for years prior to that. I'd been studying yoga uh, to teach. I learned cards two years prior to quitting as well. I knew that I wanted to do I already knew what I was going to do before I did it, but I just needed to pull the trigger. And so um, I also just re realized I didn't have the desire to do what I was doing anymore. So the death of a loved one triggered that knowledge that I was wasting my time. And I could care less about meetings and deadlines and these artificial things anymore. 
Like I literally went in thinking, this is such a waste of time. I can't, I can't be here one more day. So I put a date on the calendar and I wrote the letter and I just handed it to them and thought I just made a mistake, but it also, it obviously it wasn't, but we all have that moment. Like, did I just mess it up? Because I was a, a really successful career. I've been working in that industry for 15 years and uh, I took a leap of faith. I did the tower of the fool and the star all at once. <laughs> and it was the best decision I ever made because that was really what I had to do. I had to destroy what I was. I had to become what I needed to be. And I had to take that leap of faith. So it was those three cards all at once. And then I went that evening to one of the last sessions that I was going to for my yoga teacher training. It was like the second to last month, I think. So all these synchronicities aligned and then things started to improve. Things got better. And I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, wouldn't take back a moment. <laughs> Hopefully that answers your question. But I think knowing what you need to do and realizing like, are you, do you care about the job that you're doing? If not, why are you doing it? Do you know what you want to do? Um, if so, how can you do it? Do you have the resources to do it? If not, plan and make a plan of exit. And that's what I had been doing, not so subtly. I actually was saving money for a while. I knew pro probably two years before. That's why my teacher was saying, like, get on with your life now. You don't have any excuses. You have to do it. So, okay, that's, that's that. Um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so the next question here is from Dana. And... Dana asked, I sometimes feel uncomfortable when I invoke angels because I feel though um, I feel as though it's opening a door for lower vibrational beings. I would appreciate it if you could address this. So great question. The one thing that didn't uh, I didn't understand was invoke because it sounds to me like you might be trying to like conjure or control. Don't do that. <laughs> um, I think angels are there as a resource. Uh, I pray to them. I don't expect them or demand them to do anything. Uh, I ask for guidance and signs and I use my own free will then to move forward. So if you're trying to invoke or conjure or some somehow bring spirits into the space, sure, that could be difficult. Uh, that's beyond my skill and I don't do that. Um, I'm trying to work on my own energy and not need to kind of pull in another entity. That's not kind of what I do. But if you're just talking about like calling in and calling on angels, I have some advice for you. So. When I'm speaking to angels to make sure that I connect with high frequency angels, I specifically say I'm calling on um, angels of love, of light, with, that work with compassion and that are of God. That in and of itself will negate any risk that you're not going to connect with a high frequency angel. You can specifically say, I only want to connect with uh, an archangel. And you can specifically call out one or two by name. The one that is like, a go-to in many, many religious texts is Michael. It appears in many, like I said, it's not just uh, Christian religion, it's New and Old Testament. Um, I believe it's even in the Quran. There's a lot of references to Michael. Gabriel is another one that you see time and again, and so is Raphael. Those are three that are very safe, very um, documented, and you can work with Michael for protection, Gabriel for communication, for clarity, Raphael for healing. Uh, they do a lot of other things, but those are some high level things that you can work with them. If you do that, if you connect with something of that high frequency, you'll be fine. When in doubt, just connect with God. You don't have to work with the go-betweens. Angels are awesome, but you can just connect directly with God. We all have that open line and just close your eyes and God can be whatever it is to you, whether it's, you know, like multiple deities, one deity, male, female, doesn't matter the creative force that we all came from. Just connect with that and say, I'm ready to I, I'm ready to improve myself. I need your guidance, show me the way, whatever. So that's my advice to you. You're overthinking it. Um, the only other sort of caution I would say is don't try to control angels. That's not how it works. Open yourself up and ask for assistance, but invoking or trying to manipulate, I don't know how to do that and I wouldn't advise to do that. Okay, talking to now Jazzy and your question was, um, you said you've done a lot of work on your mind, your body, and your spirit, and it's caused uh, you to kind of raise your vibration, which is awesome. You said, what are some indications one might experience in these higher levels of vibration? For instance, uh, Jazzy said that they were getting chills when they started to receive information and know something to be true without having any physical evidence. What are some other things? So that's a great question, and I think this applies to everybody here. Um, I said that... Uh, you're gonna probably open up to other 
feelings as you start to work with people. So if you choose to just do business with people or even take on something like healing for a profession, one thing that you might start to pick up on is how it feel, how their emotional state feels. So if I do a reading for someone and I start to get an itchy scalp, um, it has nothing to do with mine because I shampoo every day, I have no problems. But if I'm talking to someone and they get angry or their thoughts get scattered, I can feel the energy in my scalp as if I had like ants on my scalp. That's one thing. I've also had a sensation where I felt needles in my fingers as someone was texting me something that wasn't nice. <laughs> um, sometimes I feel uh, sympathetic pain in my body. If someone is having uh, back issues or digestion problems, I'll feel it in the stomach or relationship issues. It feels like there's a needle in my stomach. They're not all pleasant. That's what I'm gonna say, but they, they're temporary. They come really fast. You know it's not you. It comes and goes really quickly. And what I've learned to do with this is release it. I will, as soon as I ask a person, are you going through something in this part of your body? The pain leaves me. And then I, I allow for them to kind of discuss what it is and we talk about it. So usually it's just kind of like a tarot card. It comes through so that I can pay attention or I can get to what they're truly feeling. So if I'm talking to someone and I start to feel all this agitation, I'll say, why don't we take a deep breath? It feels like you're having... You, you need to talk to me about something or this isn't resonating with you. So why don't we take a half step back? So that's what I can kind of feel is the heat, the intensity or the frequency of their, um, their energy. Some other things that will happen that aren't empathic but are psychic is you might know right before someone's gonna call or email you, you might pick up the phone and start dialing and it rings right as you're, you're about to dial them. Um, you may know what someone's gonna say before they say it. Um, you may be able to know what's wrong in your body. This is really interesting, actually. There's been a few times where I've gone to the doctor and I know I'm like, it's, it's here, it's here. And they have to do a test or something. And later they, they'll ask me, how did you know? I just said, I don't know. I knew that it was that part of my body because I intuitively got that, but I don't go into all of that because they'll think I'm crazy. <laughs> so I'll just say, I had a hush. Uh, and you'll be able to sometimes diagnose or know what's wrong. You could also hear higher tones. Um, like specifically when you're about to connect with an, a, an angel, a lot of times you hear this really high pitched sound and you might even feel a pop in your ear and then you start to hear them. Um, likewise with low frequencies, you can smell rotten things like sulfur or manure or things like that. So all of these things start to open up, take notes, notice what the sensation was and then what happened in your life. It's going to be different for everyone. So. Uh, you'll learn to read the signs in your body. But yeah, there's a lot of cool things that can happen at, uh, as a part of this. One thing I'd like to say is you can feel the love too. We talked about a lot of painful things, but if you're around someone and they're really happy or they're proud or they're, they're just in a, in a state of bliss, whoosh, the bliss comes through to you too. So um, yeah, it can be really cool when you're connecting with like-minded people. So the next question was from, I believe the name is Kevin, K-A-V-I-N, um, you said, during meditation and sleep, you constantly see Buddha, Ganesha, or Shiva. And you said you weren't complaining. I don't blame you, though. That's pretty awesome, you said. But it seems to go as soon as you try to move in a direction as far as Reiki, learning another language, learning guitar, et cetera. Um, so my advice, you said you, you wanted to understand what, what this was, what, why it was happening. I think part of this is, first of all, these deities are coming through or these ascended masters are coming through to just kind of bless you. There's probably a message. So one thing I would try to do is create some space and connect with all of them separately. Try to say, I'm open to what, what are you trying? Like we talked earlier about listening, not trying to kind of put too much energy into it. If you have an altar and you have Shiva there, really connect with the energy of Shiva and see what it wants to bring through. Shiva can be pretty tough. I've actually connected with that and Never do a prayer to Shiva before you go to sleep. I had a nightmares all night long because Shiva was kind of stomping out all the demons of my life and I had to deal with all this stuff. So that's a better waking deity. Um, Buddha and Ganesha are much more subtle and much softer. But what I wrote here was all of these deities portend good things. There's really nothing negative with any of them. Shiva could come through to show you things you've got to work on. Um, I would just slow down, try to tune into the frequency of the guides. And um, I think that not trying to control or read too much into it is is the key here um and it sounds like you're trying to do a lot of things at once 
So I would just focus on one and see what's happening with the guides in any one of these. I'm gonna pull a card too to see if there's any messages for you on what all of these visitations are about. So part of it is, uh, yeah, to trust your own, <laughs> your own purpose, your own communication, not to second guess yourself. And I think some of this is you're over, overthinking it. So how can this person more successfully connect to them? Yeah, just hold space and uh, really focus on what you want to do. Uh, I mean, Buddha is there to help you be more still. Ganesha will re remove any sort of blocks in your way. And Shiva can literally go through and protect you and get rid of stuff. So I would work with each separately. It just sounds like there's too much going on in your life. But don't worry. These are awesome um, so signs that you're awakening. So just slow down. That would be my advice there. Catherine asked me, are there cards in the tarot deck that have personal meaning to you? Like a card that represents someone that you know, or maybe a card that always reminds you of a personal experience. And I guess you were asking just to help you understand that if there was something here that wasn't a traditional uh, sort of meaning to the card. Well, here's the interesting thing. I feel like um, tarot is always evolving. Like we look at some of these cards, particularly like the chariot uh, or things like that. And nowadays they can mean such different things, but you know, eight of pentacles can mean texting. That's an interesting thing that I've picked up on in modern interpretations. Um, the magician for me is a healer, depending on its position. It's not just about uh, being able to be like a jack of all trades or needing to focus, or uh, it can actually be someone who can channel energy, just like the high priestess can be a psychic. Uh, for me, you asked if there's a personal meaning for some of the cards. My two favorite cards in the deck uh, might be like the world and the star. Um, the world, because as someone who works in the field of communication, uh, it, it shows me that I'm doing something that will reach a wide audience and have a lot of impact. It's basically a broadcasting card. So um, publication, broadcasting, dissemination, expansion, um, ascension, all of those things are part of the world. So I love that card. The star because it's connecting to your soul's path. And I have a very personal relationship. I think one of my, we all come from stars, I say this, but I honestly feel like I, I have some remembrance of being a star. and kind of like holding things together. I use it a lot in meditation. So those are the, my personal, two of my personal favorites. Um, people like, here's, I'm gonna talk about personality types. If I see queen of wands in reverse, it's a bossy person. <laughs> if I see um, strength and empress, both in the same spread, both reverse, it's a busy body. Um, and I know that this is a person that kind of like is a helicopter in and won't let go of stuff. And Queen of Swords reverse typically doesn't have nice things to say. <laughs> so I can get personality types pretty quickly with some of the cards. But yeah, like non-traditional meanings, uh, they're always coming through to me. But Eight of Pentacles recently has been texting. Uh, so that's something new. Ruth asked me, um, let's see here. You wanted to know, this was it. Okay, I saw this question pop up in the live chat here. Uh, you wanted to know what to do if you're if you have a guide that speaks another language. Fantastic question. Um, and also one thing that Ruth was experiencing was sort of like this. It was a third eye opening. It says I've been working with my third eye opening and I've been experiencing a window opening like a screen in screen where I can actually see people moving and talking. No audio. I also hear voices, but sometimes they're in other languages. So first of all, if you have a guide that you're working with and they're speaking in a language that you don't understand, you can ask them to meet your frequency. This also works if they're speaking, but you can't hear it. So um, sometimes what happens is um, like if it's too, too much of a whisper or the voice you don't, you don't understand it, I'll just say, turn it up a little bit or I'll say, speak in my head because um, you, can, you can ask the guides to shift to telepathy and you could just hear it as if the, it's kind of like when you put your ear pods in and you're hearing it in your head space, not externally. That's a good way to describe it. You can ask the guides to project the sound in your mind. Uh, and if they speak another language, you can use the example that I, I talked about earlier, which is show me, don't tell me, and give me the internal download of what it is, because you can understand without words. So try to meet your guide halfway and ask them to meet you halfway, and you'll be able to talk without talking. A lot of the guides and a lot of the visions that I receive have no audio attached to it. It's a visual download with maybe a few short words. You don't need to speak fluidly with your guides. They can show you things. They could also speak in cards to you if you'd like, okay? Um, with the picture-in-picture -picture thing, I think you're just starting to see perhaps a metaphor of what's 
going on in the past or what might be about to happen and just start to tune into it. Don't, here's the one thing that is important to kind of going deeper into clear audience, which is listening with your sort of, it's not just your ears, you're actually listening with your ear chakras, which again, it can be telepathic, it can be in your brain, not just your, um, you could be deaf and still be kind of working with your ear chakra. Um, but what I was gonna say is try not to, to see it or listen, just, just kind of surrender to it and think I've got this and melt into it a little bit. Because when I try to listen to my guides, they go away. But if I just, if I'm just there and I, I trust and I, and I try not to spend too much energy and just think it's gonna be fine, I, we're, we're communicating, it's good. The communication holds. It's when I try to control the channel that the channel breaks a little bit. So I just let the, the audio come through, the visual come through. And when it's done, the transmission ends. But if you try to work with it too much, ask them to amplify it, don't do the amplification yourself. They can do that for you. Okay, I hope that helps. But you don't, There, I, I had a guide once that spoke Spanish and didn't wanna speak any other language or didn't want to try other things with me. So it just moved on and I got a different guide. You can always ask for something else if you need it. So sometimes they can try different language. Sometimes they can try nonverbal through visuals. Sometimes they'll pull someone else in that's a better match. You can always ask for that. Lynn asked me, um, does your intuitive nature ever stop? Can you get rest? What a great question. Uh, I think it's all about boundaries. The person that comes to mind is the Long Island medium. We see her going to the grocery store and she's like, who's the person with the father and the thing and the da 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 da. Okay, I think a lot of that is probably more produced for television. I have a feeling that Teresa has a normal life and just goes around town and actually lives her life. But there are moments where she might actually get something and decide because the cameras are on that it's a good time. Um, I think most people you have to have limits, okay? I don't bring I don't bring the cards everywhere. Like if I'm gonna go meet friends for a celebratory dinner, we're just gonna have a good time. I'm not gonna pull cards out on the table and talk. This is a time for us to share time together. Uh, and if I receive a download, I don't always need to share it with someone. Sometimes I receive it so that I know how to interact with that person. It's not always for open discussion. And if there's something painful or something that someone's not ready to talk about yet, I hold space until they are ready. Uh, but it's not my job always to kind of bring that message in. So I totally have a regular life. I walk to the supermarket and I don't read people. <laughs> I hang out with friends and I don't read them. And I, I just have like, yeah, regular existence when I'm not doing what I'm doing. I also have specific spaces where I work. So I write in a different room than I read. So my, my book writing that I do, my novelist sort of stuff, that's in another room. When I read, it's right here. Um, and if I'm going to, I, I basically contain spaces and I think that's really important. And I have hours during which I work and hours that I don't. I think all of these things are good. One other thing that I would say it's important is boundaries in general are essential. So unless it somehow pertains to me, I'm not pulling cards for everyone in my family. I don't spy on people. I, that, that, I, I'd rather put my energy into taking a walk, into playing with Apollo, doing something that's a lot more fun. So use your energy on yourself, invest in yourself, try not to um, encroach on other people's boundaries, and then don't always be on, and I think you'll be fine. Uh, so <laughs> you were saying with the Queen of Swords. Okay, good. All right, anyway, um, let's go to the next one here. This is from Deborah. And you said, uh, you're fascinated by orbs. This is a cool question, because I'm sure some of you have seen this. You said you have at least 100 pictures from your digital camera. You can't see them with your own eyes, but you seem to know when they're there. So it sounds like you're feeling them. Um, often they're simple white, but others are magnificent color ones. Can you help us understand their presence? So this reminded me of something that both my mother and I experienced once, which was, and, and more than once actually, uh, but there was a point maybe five or six years ago where I was seeing sparks or, um, quick blasts of light in the corner of my, like not in my eye, but like in the room. And one night in particular, I told you my father was really sick for a while, but it was before he had to go to the hospital. We were on um, vacation or on a holiday and I actually was laying down on, on the hotel bed and I could see this light trace itself up the hotel room, go across the ceiling and into my uh, parents adjacent suite. And she saw it over there too. And it was a, it was an angel. It was, it was an angelic entity there protecting us and warning us that he was going to need to, to, to go to the hospital. Um, but usually um, when I see bright light or orbs, it's good. It tells me that you have a high frequency energy around you. The other thing is if you can feel it and it feels good, it's good. 
Um, so high frequency energy, I talked about this a long time ago. I think it was maybe video one or two in my intuitive development series, but high frequency energy is like a rush, a positive rush. It's, it's like you're, uh, it's euphoric, right? You feel really good. Uh, you might get something like chills, but it's not scary chills. It's sort of like this nice warm energy. So if it feels good, it's good. If it doesn't feel good, then pay attention to it. Um, white or golden light is angelic or of the higher realms. Uh, Multicolored light could also be maybe pieces of your own auric shield that you're seeing a little bit. You could be seeing your own aura. You could also be seeing something that just has a different energetic signature. One day, I can't always see auric fields, but there's been a few times where they were really clear. Uh, one time was with uh, a really great teacher here in LA uh, who plays the gong in uh, Kundalini Yoga. And uh, I could see the blue energy around his hands. And each time he hit the gong, I could see the blue energy come out over top of us like, like rain. So he was using his heal. He was a channel. He was using his healing energy and it was coming right out and hitting all of us. Uh, and it was really beautiful to see. I'm like, wait, did I just see that? I blinked my eyes a few times and I could see the energy. And then again, if you focus too much, it goes away. So that was an example of being able to see an auric field. Um, I've also been able to see healing points in my own hand. Like if I look at it in a dark room, I can see like a galaxy of light, these little points. Um, and I've also been able to see my own auric field once when I woke up, I could see this sort of charged energy field around me. It was really, it only came up like a few millimeters above my body. Um, it was bluish green and I could see it. So you could be seeing a little bit of your energy field. You could be seeing the energy of something else, a spirit. And it doesn't happen all the time. And our it's not really your eyes, it's your third eye. It's kind of like if I see a full body apparition, I might be think I'm seeing it with my eyes, but it's a combination. I'm actually perceiving something that's not physically there. So anyway, I hope that answered your question. It's nothing to worry about. If they're orbs of light, it's probably good. They're probably trying to tell you something. Just tune in a little bit and be grateful for their presence. Um, if you see something darker, I will hit on this. You didn't ask this question. It's probably a sign that you need to clean up your life, clean up your house, smudge, um, and um, it's not something to be feared. It's just a sign that some clearing needs to be done. If you get any uh, negative sensations, I talked a little bit about smelling something that smells rotten or hearing something that sounds kind of gravelly or whatever. That's, again, when you really need to clear the house and clear your energy. Uh, let's see. I think I'm down to my last one, which means we can probably take a couple. I don't want to go too far into over an hour, but we can go maybe 10 or 15 minutes. But let me answer this last question and then I'll take a couple. All right. So, Ashley, you said um, you'd love to ask a question related to the channeling of messages through meditation. OK, got it. What's your process? You, OK, you asked me a bunch of questions, so I'm going to try to help. <laughs> Um, so I think you mean, how do I get the channeled message and also just how do I channel in general? So I show up about two hours before a reading and I clear the space, uh, I meditate. And if I'm going to do a, a reading, I have a bunch of cards. Uh, I like, I have like 30 decks or something. So I'll go through and I'll pick out which one I'm going to read with that day. And then I will take that deck and I bless it. Um, and I will start to meditate over it and I just tune into what comes through. But the first thing I would do is it's, it's prayer and meditation. I bless what I'm going to work with. And then I just, I'm quiet. I'm quiet. And I start to, sometimes I hear something. I could hear a, a sound, a voice. I could see something. I could smell something. And I just take a piece of paper and start to scribble stuff down. That's the automatic writing. I take notes. By the time I get ready for the uh, broadcast, I usually write it down in something that you can read so it's not chicken scratch. Um, but uh, that's kind of the process there. But I would say I'm going to answer your questions and then we'll get into the, the regular one here for everybody. But um, who do these messages come from? God, angels, guides, and my higher self, pretty much. Uh, is, something, is this something everyone can do? Yes, with practice. How long did you practice before seeing useful results? Uh, I think I told you earlier today, I've been working on this for over 11 years. Uh, so it took me that long to get where I'm at today. But when I, the minute I picked up cards, I started to see results. This is because I did it in a past life. I also saw that I was, I read like the Marseille deck or something like that in Paris once. I could see a past life where I was reading cards. So it came back really easily. Um, and the, I just had a desire to pick them up. And I think I talked in one of my videos, I would just keep seeing playing cards around town. I still do 
in Los Angeles, invariably, I'll see like, you know, five of hearts or an ace of spades or something just randomly on the ground. So I, I kept getting these signs and signals. Um, techniques or recommendations for um, common struggles or blockages for beginners. Ground yourself, set parameters that you wanna connect with the light as I talked about earlier. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't expect everything overnight and be persistent. Be, make a habit of this. And, uh, and that's gonna be the, the best way to make that happen. So I think I got through everything in an hour. I'm glad I took some notes. Now, uh, I'm gonna open this up to some questions. I know that some of you have um, given a contribution. Let me see if I can see any questions from anyone that did a super chat. I'm not sure if I can see everything here. So um, uh, it, anybody that did a super chat, if you have a question, let me know. No, no pick a card. We're not doing pick a card. So what I really want to see, by the way, is a question about, you, you just heard about 20 of them. Is there a question about intuitive development, uh, about sort of psychic awareness, the tarot, metaphysics, yoga, or meditation? So I have a question here about um, wanting to know about the existence of spirit deep within in your body. You want to know how to differ from uh, ego from intu intuition. Intuition doesn't have a point of view. It kind of is coming through as a blessing. It's telling you what you need to hear. And again, not trying to control it is important. So I think just allowing it to flow. Um, the best deck, Radiant Weight, um, uh, Radiant Rider Weight. This is the one that is my go-to. You can tell it's been used quite a bit. It's the Rider weight traditional deck that's just a little bit brighter. It's a really good deck to use. How do you separate your energy from the person that you're reading? I start with the meditation. I put us both in a circle of light. I put an intention that I can read for them, but I'm not going to get into their energy. And we breathe and we meditate and that's enough. Also, at the end of the reading, if you just take the deck, kind of let it go like that, you're fine. The, this is the this is what's going to hold the energy, not me. This is what's kind of helping me see it. I'm not going into their head. I might feel things as I'm reading this, but it's a very clean way to look at people's energy. So I already answered the question about turning myself off. I just don't carry the cards with me, and I set the intention that I'm going to have a good time, and I'm not. For me, that's enough. Some people need to put a hat on or need to say something. Um, so that's usually enough. So if you're seeing anything uh, visual around you, you said you start to see white swirls around you meditating. And uh, yeah, this could actually be two things. It could be spiritual protection around you. It could also be your own auric field. Um, it's usually not something to worry about. Just again, breathe, put, pull in the light around you and set that intention to connect to the light. How do you let go uh, and allow your intu intuition to flow at times when you're overly concerned for another? Um, so you wanna know how to be objective. That's actually when the cards come in really nice. So if you pull cards, the cards are gonna objectively show you what's going on then you have to kind of just read the signs. So that's where I feel tarot is awesome. Uh, if you're feeling any sensations between your brows, it's a third eye awakening. Um, so whether it's a feeling of pressure, of heat, of coolness, it's probably the third eye awakening. Yes, I've experienced astral projection. We all do to some degree in dreams. Um, and that's something you have to work at controlling. But yes, I have. Uh, I don't see my third eye when I meditate, but I feel pressure there. And you can kind of move past the sensation of pressure. Sometimes it feels uncomfortable. I would especially feel this uh, whenever I do yoga sometimes. You'll feel a really deep activation there. What's a good layout other than the Celtic cross? Just do a three card pull, past, present and future influences. It's basic and it's better sometimes if you're just trying to get a quick feel for something. Simple is better. How do you beat fear of connecting to the spiritual world? It's a good question. Uh, I, I do feel like I've talked about this to a great degree. Rather than just sitting here and 
So meditation and any sort of spiritual work can be like a party line if you're not if you're not picky or discerning. So don't make it a party line. Be specific in the goal. Be specific in the audience or in the people that you're going to be connecting with and trust in that. You have to believe in yourself. And it's kind of like swimming. You wouldn't jump straight into the deep end. Wait a little bit in the shallow pool. Meditate for a minute. Meditate for three minutes. Meditate for five. Um, try to connect with God first rather than an angel. Like I would go to the highest energy if you have any doubt. You'll be fine then. Don't mess around with any of the uh, any of the in betweens. Okay, go straight to the operator. Let's see. If I get messages that things will happen in dreams, how do I bring getting messages when I awake as well? So I talked about this. Like you're going to pick up on. Um, it's more subtle when you're awake. So. Sometimes, uh, honestly, your guides and also synchronicities, they can happen with everyday things like music, license plate numbers, numbers repeating. A lot of people have different experiences with being guided. And so it can be subtle like that. And it takes work, it takes time. And on some levels, it just takes not feeling like you're trying to control that and you'll get the, the download that you need. One time I had a coworker that I met for the first time and whispered in my ear, I heard the word careful. And that person ended up being more than a little difficult. So uh, I didn't ask for that or, or tune that in. It just came to me. How do you align yourselves with your highest self? Um, I think by being authentic. I think what, unfortunately, what happens with a lot of us is that we end up being programmed to be something that we're not because of parents, society, school, work. And so go back to what you believed as a kid. Like you, when we come to this planet, we know who we are, we know what we wanna do. And I think a lot of times we get talked out of that or we get shamed for who we are. And so be who you are without shame, without apologies, go back into that sense of knowing uh, what your purpose is and and don't don't let it go as, as my, Dad taught me like life is short, so don't waste time. Join compassion is key. I agree. Live in love, live in happiness, live in light, and it's going to make it a lot better. This is a great question from Misty, and um, maybe I'll take one or two more after that, and then we'll, we'll stop. So Misty asked, how did I come out to everyone when I started my spiritual journey? <laughs> and I think this is something that many light workers have to struggle with. That's a really, really good question. So... Um, Initially, I was afraid. Uh, and what I did when I started was I didn't use my last name, which by the way, you pronounce Ashbaugh. Nobody asks, but I'm sure that's a frequently asked question. It's Ashbaugh. All right, so um, the whole end of it's silent. But what I did was um, I just did like, I, the original branding for my channel and my business was just Intuitive Tarot by Nicholas. And as I started to get further on in my journey, I thought, well, my writing, which again, I'll be releasing later this year, it's all about psychic energy. And I thought, why am I gonna separate what I'm doing here with what I'm doing there? It's integration. So the first step was to use my name in my business. And then I figured if people really care, they're gonna Google me and they'll see it. So what? It's what I do, I work really hard at it, it's good stuff. And so I took pride in what I did. I put my name behind what I did. And then, uh, and then I just started telling people, I'm like, yeah, if they asked what I was doing, look, a lot of people just ask, and I, instead of being obtuse and saying I did coaching, I said, yeah, I do intuitive coaching. Um, I read tarot. Um, and people are like, oh, that's cool. Most people were fine with it because I thought it, I didn't make apologies for it. I was just very, um, very honest because I work really hard and I'm proud of what I do. So I would say do your best uh, and don't be ashamed and deliver what you do with, with love, with light. And... If anybody doesn't get it, they really weren't your friend to, to begin with. So I'm sure some people are scratching their head thinking like Nicholas lost his mind, but most people were actually curious and got readings or wanted to talk more. So like anything, when you kind of really come into your light and into your truth, there's nothing to fear.
So I did talk a little bit about the law of attraction or the law of detachment actually a little bit in manifestation. So you should check that video out. I think you'll enjoy it. If you're flying in your dream, you might actually be astrally projecting. Um, so uh, it's also a sign of freedom, of letting go of things. It's not a bad thing at all. Any other questions? I'll take one or two more. I liked the question about coming out spiritually. That was really good. Let's go to something big like that. Is there any other big questions about that? I'm not answering pick a card questions. So it sounds like we still have some of those. Um, I talked about timelines earlier. They're always in flux. So um, that's free will, that's choice. So know that you can control timelines. For 2020, you can look at my January readings. I pulled four cards for those. So I, each and every sign I talked about 2020. All right, I think we've answered most of them. So let's end on a meditation, okay? So um, I always like to end every reading and every sort of video with a meditation. And today I want to really connect this beautiful group of light workers together. And um, after that, we'll talk a little bit about how you can participate in perhaps the next viewer's choice or um, Q and A video. But I just wanna say thanks for joining. Um, right now, if everyone can close their eyes for a second, Ground yourself. We talked earlier about the value of grounding, being grounded. So if you want to, you can grab onto one of the crystals or stones that you have in your house. A regular rock will work. Uh, I want you to feel a connection to the planet. And let's offer a little bit of healing to Mother Earth. This is something she needs quite a bit of right now. Um, I would say each and every part of the planet is in some level of distress or stress. So I want you to connect your heart with the heart of the planet and just open up and give a little bit of gratitude and say thank you so much for um, allowing me to be here, for holding me up each and every day. And for those of you that are struggling with trying to be who you are spiritually or in some other way trying to be authentic and step into your light, know that in Gaia and Mother Earth, you always have someone there to support you, someone there to love you. And I want you to feel that um, as you say, I love you to the planet, she says, I love you right back. And she wraps her arms and her energy around you. Just feel that uh, divine feminine energy encircling you, holding you still, keeping you in place. And with that sense of safety, almost like you have a blanket of love and light around your body, I want you to look up towards the heavens and connect to your higher self. See one star in the sky shining brighter than the rest, your North Star, your true self, your true vision of who you are. Some of you are asking today, how can I be that person? How can I get there? I want you to see the light and I want you to connect with it and see it shining down and shining through your crown chakra and allow it to open a gateway between you on this planet in your physical body and your stellar, your astral self up there in the heavens. And know that there's this sort of illusion that you're stuck or that you can only do so much. I want you to get back to that divine self, see yourself as a uh, connection to God, part of the divine, divine creative force, knowing that it is timeless, that it is ageless, that it is genderless, that it is something that can um, exist always. And when you realize that your soul is eternal, but this lifetime seems to have its own ups and downs, you're going to be able to deal with all the little tumults, all the kind of ups and downs without having it kind of take you off course. See that light now creating a map in front of you. Each and every one of you will have a map that looks unique. Imagine that just like the constellations, you see the connections lighting up on the map in front of you. And at the destination point, you see success, you see happiness, you see fulfillment. You're connecting to your high self. Some of you have lost that higher connection. So now I want you to get back to it. Find your North Star, find who you are, find what it is that you need to do. And let's breathe in the truth, breathe in the light and start to Feel that you're getting propelled or moved along that map, along that path now that you know it. Nice deep inhale. Drinking in that light, that ancient knowledge and that trust that you're gonna be okay. Exhale, letting go of the feeling of being stuck. Now imagining that Mother Earth is lifting you up, 
like one of the ace cards in right away, letting you go. And now stretch your wings out. We all have them. Many of us are earth angels or we can connect to our previous incarnations and we were able to fly, we were able to move around. I want you to feel that those wings are outstretched, that you're going to use that sort of two of wands energy, see where you wanna go, feel that you can go there and start to allow yourself to feel the movement happen. Feel the wind beneath your angelic wings start to lift you up and move you on that path. See the North Star that you've created, light that path, feel your heart open up and also bring you further along that path. And imagine today that it can happen faster than you imagine. Time is an illusion, it's a construct that's specific to this reality, to this particular incarnation, but it doesn't always exist. So um, see it as something that you can move, that you can shift. On the last breath, what my guides want me to kind of impart on you is this feeling of freedom, freedom to be yourself, freedom to do what you want, freedom to let go, freedom to be. Just think the this word in your head or this phrase in your head, I am free. <sighs> Feel your energy slowly come back into your body. Feel those wings still outstretched. Allow yourself to go wherever you need to go. Feel that support from the planet, but now feel that you could start to move with much greater speed and ease. Everything's going to be a little bit easier now. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate your presence today. As I said, uh, this was a thank you for helping me get to this milestone. I'll do it when we hit the next milestone, but I'd also like to do this in between. So hopefully in the future, I can do some viewer choice type videos and uh, I can poll you and ask you for things that you'd be looking for. You're all very welcome, by the way. Um, if you'd like to connect with me, I think that my guides have been putting everything out there. Um, you can go to my website, it's nicholasashbaugh.com. Uh, you can also connect with me on Twitter, where I will remind you uh, right before a reading happens that it's going to be posted. Instagram, where I've been using stories to communicate upcoming videos. Same thing with uh, YouTube and Facebook. I've been using the stories there. And again, Patreon uh, is one of the places that I was using for questions today. So Patreon, or if you click the Join button, and the way that you can get to the Join button today is by clicking on that little dollar sign next to the face, and I think there's a Join option there. Uh, and then in, in future videos, for those people that help each and every month, I will, uh, I'll try to answer your questions and uh, get back to you. And for anybody that's done a super chat today, thank you so much. If I didn't get a chance to answer your question, I'll try to look through some of these and uh, keep them in mind for a future video, okay? In the meantime, sending you much love and light. And uh, yeah, I did print them out because unfortunately with a live feed, you can't put in a lower third graphic. So old school, but it works, right? All right, take care, guys. See you soon and thank you again.